What's up guys? This is the Broferman and I am back to bring you um, a new type of episode, which I think I should do when I uh, finish campaign, and that's a... it's not a faction guide per se, because guides go into quite a large, a large amount of detail. This is more a tips and advice video about to play, or from my experience, is how best to play a particular faction, and because I've fairly recently finished the Louisiana campaign, I think I thought, well, let's try it out here with Louisiana. So obviously with Louisiana you start with these two territories in the central, well, the central section of Northern America, and the start is actually pretty difficult, but also quite challenge, quite challenging in an interesting way. Uh, so you start off with a, a minor settlement, New Orleans, as your headquarters, and what you can immediately see is it's not an actual proper city, like say Boston or Philadelphia, and that's quite significant because it limits your ability to recruit units both in terms of variety and in capacity but because you don't have any of these buildings that means you can't research these things because even with the most bare bones technology um, well military technologies you need a you need an army encampment to kick off your military techs here you need a cannon foundry to kick off your artillery techs and an admiralty to kick off your naval techs you can start off by doing some of the agricultural stuff because you've got peasant farms. But so, this leads me on to another point with Louisiana, is that you don't actually have that many towns. So you've got Baton Rouge here, Little Rock, uh, there's a couple more up here, Fort Crevasseur, Crevacure, Crevasseur, and there's a couple more up here in nearby areas, but they're actually quite far away to develop. So if I go on to policies and throttle back, so Baton Rouge, according to this, will develop in 55 turns, which is is kind of not true because <laughs> I've had I've been trying to develop in my campaign. I tried to develop Baton Rouge for an awful long time. And I, I don't think I ever got it to actually develop as a town. So you can't rely on the towns in these two areas providing what you need, and that's quite important because you can't realistically generate towns. That means that you're unlikely to be able to progress down the metal industry track. And the textile industry track for quite a while. You never. It's going to take a very long time to get hold of the weavers and the smiths. It's definitely doable. If you play, if you play pretty conservatively, you could probably slowly build those up. But it's quite difficult. But the main uh, issue around research in general is because you don't have any towns, you don't have any towns to build a school. And there are a couple of a couple of ways you can go about doing it. Um, but the best one, I think, actually, of all of your bordering territories, I don't think any... So Teleco has a has a, um, a town, so you could potentially declare war on the Cherokee and attack, attack Teleco. But I don't... I don't think that... That's not the way to go for me, because the Okra Confederacy up here in Cayuga, they also have a town. Right now it's a craft workshop, and that's what I did. I pushed my way up through the Okwa to capture this territory and gain access to a school rather than attacking the Cherokee because you currently you start off trading with the Cherokee and they don't actually hate you that much. So if you go for go for um, the Okwa, you don't get any issues around the Cherokee hating you. You keep trading with them, but moreover, when you... When I pushed up and took these territories, I had a choice for either going north against the French or south against the British. And at that point, it's kind of up to you. I was already at war with the British. It made sense to kind of carry on and capture these territories. But it also means if you've got good relations with the Cherokee and they're not involved, they're not at war with you, then the British have no front lines to cause you any trouble apart from up here. This is your. This becomes your main front line with potential... Um, um, amphibious landings coming down through this river here and going after the British is also quite relevant because not only do you have to go after a large town to get access to barracks, cannon foundries and so on uh, Philadelphia is the only five is the, is the only five building territory in the, um, in the in the continent in this part of the world, it's the only one you know, Mexico Mexico is only four. Caracas, not Car yeah, Caracas is only four. Obviously, Quebec is also only four. 
So you have to go for Philadelphia because if you don't go for Philadelphia, you will never get an Admiralty to get the basic um, naval technologies, which means that certain things like a dockyard will be completely out of reach. And that means that you'll never be able to get anything higher than fifth rate. You'll be stuck at fifth rate level. And that's important because you will rely quite heavily on trade. Trade with other countries, export of your own resources to maintain your economy. So this port is incredibly important. So it needs to be a trade port to maintain an economic access. But also you need to hold it. So you need to recruit a lot of ships to make sure this port, if it is ever blockaded, you can break the blockade immediately. Otherwise that will destroy you. What it does, I mean, if you're more navally, well, almost everyone's more navally capable than I am, but you definitely, there's definitely some scope to um, ambush pirate fleets and pick up the odd useful ship here and there to build up quite a nice little uh, gold squadron, if you like. But until you've pushed up and you're capturing, you know, British coastal regions, you, it's very, it's actually quite difficult to gain access to um, a proper dedicated military shipyard. So that's something to bear in mind. Um, in terms of alliances, you are allied, you're a protector of the French, which means they're, they're very unlikely to declare war on you. So you may as well keep them on side and go after the British. Well, go after 13 colonies, which de facto makes you go against the British, because they will sooner or later either join the British or they'll land. Um, but another thing to watch out for the British is that means you've got Nassau and Port Royal, who generally don't have much to do, you find they start to have things to do and they start to land. And maybe not near, maybe not on your home territory, but they soon start to dump troops up to the north on the front, um, which is actually which is quite quite fun but a bit frustrating. So I find, yeah, you know, my general rule, my general guideline with playing as Louisiana is to go very aggressive and pick off the Okra Confederacy first, get hold of the school spend a few turns turtling and building up, then jump on the British and capture a few key territories while trying to keep the Cherokees sweet to protect. Otherwise, you've got this whole border. Well, not the whole border. You've got this border plus a bunch of um, crossing points to guard, which is a real pain. So it's best just to not be at war with them. Um, at least not until you've knocked out 13 colonies and then you can just surround and destroy them. Um, it's useful to try and maintain peaceful relations with New Spain because you will find sometimes that when people blockade your ports it's new Spanish ships that will sail out to battle with the people blockading them and fall back. Uh, but yeah, you've got to go quite pretty aggressive. That probably means more cavalry heavy armies in general because you're going after native troops without, without even plug bayonets. You know, you don't have basic bayonets. You don't have basic artillery shot. You have to rely on you know, inf line infantry. You can get it from the next level up. Yeah, there we go. Colonial line. You can get that in New Orleans, but without fire by rank, without bayonets, it, it can be quite easy if you miscalculate uh, to have a quite devastating result against these territories. Um, yeah, it's best to, it's best to go off the Oakwa first, and then once you've taken the thirteen colonies, to be honest, the world's the game, the game's on at that point. You know, you got, you'll have a solid amount of income coming in. You'll have your school able to do research. You might be able to get even more schools as they pop, as new territories pop up on the east coast. Philadelphia and Boston are fantastic territories to hold because that really scales up your recruitment capacity. And then you've got your choice: do you go south and secure the British territories in the in the Caribbean and also kill the pirates? Do you hop over and start taking lands in Europe? Do you start attacking India? You know, at that point, there is no guide. There is no, there's no need to say, okay, here's what you must do, because at that point, you've got the economy and the production to do whatever you like. And that's why I really like Louisiana. Lots of certain campaigns, like the ones I'm currently doing with Great Britain and Spain, they. You don't have that early game where you have to do everything perfectly or else your little empire crumbles into dust. You're pretty safe. Um, whereas this, my Louisiana campaign with Theodore at the helm, uh, you just pretty much 
build the best stack you can, push north, and knock out these territories one after another, and then you breathe a sigh of relief. If you can do that, and you can think, okay, right. Then you can push into 13 Colonies territory and start supporting, bringing in more troops to support. You start to see your towns develop, which starts to get you um, these basic industry buildings, which means you can start to explore and research down the industrial track. It's quite a fun campaign. But yeah, the fact that you are not starting with a true city does dictate your initial, strat initial strategy in that you can... You could go against New Spain, but all of these countries will hate you anyway. So you eventually, sooner or later, they'll come after you. So you may as well fight here first. Secure your position on the mainland or on the, the, the northern North America. And then start to explore south. I really valued New Spain as being a valuable, a, a, new, a valuable ally in securing naval uh, dominance against the pirates and whoever tried to do me harm. Uh, but yeah, that's my my general guidelines for this. Is you, whichever way you go about playing this campaign, you need to get schools because you need to get researching better military technologies to stay um, up to date with what's going on, and you need to get a big city somewhere so that you can start to research those technologies. Yeah, that it generally lead, lends itself to be taking either Boston or Philadelphia. I mean, you could attack the French. But why? If you can attack here and then know you, all you have to do is just go east, you don't have to worry about the French coming around from the rear or crossing over from Canada. Like, why, why do that? Why invite that risk when you don't have to? But yeah, so I hope you like this video. It's a, bit, it's a bit short, but that's kind of what I want these guides to be. I don't want to give you a step-by-step, a step-by-step step step, move this to here, buy this, do this, because I find those to be so incredibly dry and also not to they kind of smother your own spirit of, spirit of adventure uh, I'd like you guys to go try these things out and try, try it how I've talked about it try it your own way that's completely fine but yeah Louisiana is quite a fun campaign and you know <laughs> I've completed my world domination campaign and there's always a point where like when you're um, if you're rolling a snowball along the ground, it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. There's a critical mass, by which point no one can stop you. But you know, I I like that. But yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you've enjoyed, and hope you like this kind of um, tips and advice video for Louisiana. And good luck in all your Louisiana campaigns. Cheers, everyone.